update. The market does turn. Today's the 11th of March, 2024. I am Connor with Honor, local agent here in Santa Clarita Valley. Wanted to talk about several items that have come across the wire in the last several hours. One was a real estate commissions and home buying study that talked about the real estate commissions being paid. And comparatively so, it did get into comparisons between the actual travel agency and that industry changing, becoming an online pretty much purchase uh, purchase vehicle. So there's really nobody involved with regard to that, whereas travel agents were paid quite handsomely. However, I believe that the comparison is somewhat erroneous, not only because I'm in the industry of real estate, but the other erroneous thing is it. I've never financed a trip over 30 years. The trips I've taken haven't ever been anything of any kind of gravity to necessi necessitate me being able to do an inspection on the travel, uh, look up the area in which I'm traveling. Of course, you check out the neighborhood, but not finding out exactly where I'm staying and then finding out who those neighbors are and then trying to make connections with them because I'm going to be staying there on this vacation for several years, uh, at least like 4.7 years. That's the typical real estate average. And of course, I'm being a little tongue in cheek here, but there's a lot more moving parts with real estate. Now, of course, there are particular agents that give more value to the process. There are some agents that are of the set it and forgive it variety, set it, set it and forget it variety. They basically just put their clients in escrow and they hope the other agent takes care of everything, which I see that quite a bit in the industry. There are other agents though that do their do their diligence, do a good job, and really protect their clients. Now it does come down to commission. Who pays what? Currently, in the current model, it's up to each party to pay their own, or at least that's how it's written. Traditionally, it hasn't been that way. Traditionally, the home seller has paid the commission for the agent representing them in the sale, and the home seller's also paid the agent representing the buyer as well. That was very common, and that number was about 3% per side. I only say about because not long after I got into the industry, there was somebody that was out there offering a less than market commission value. So the commissions kind of worked their way down to about 2.5% per side. That's going to also depend on the market. If you're going to less expensive real estate, a lot of times that commission's even lower, believe it or not, than the more expensive stuff, at least looking at different markets because I'm active in a few. Besides the local board of realtors, I'm active in Ventura County and also Antelope Valley. And you can see those commission structures change quite a bit from property to property depending on price range. So let's talk about the real estate news as it is today and also just venture in carefully understanding of course that everything you pay for in real estate almost all of it is negotiable besides those point of sale items point of sale whenever they do an inspection at the property for example i have a great home inspector whenever he goes out there he expects to get paid when he's done whenever i have a termite company or pest control company go out to a property they also expect to be paid when those services have concluded, which typically for the inspection portion is done during the time we do the home inspection. Therefore, they expect to be paid during that time. The appraiser that is representing the lender for the buyer, they also require access and payment. Typically, that is something that you don't really run into directly where you're handing them a credit card, but your lender is the one that's coordinating that for you. Thereby, they will go out to the property connecting with the listing agent, not the buyer's agent, if that's the side that I happen to be on. But they contact the listing agent, they get access to the property, and then if they need anything further, they're hoping that the listing agent did their due diligence and homework where they were able to provide or they'll able they were they will be able to provide comparables or other listings just in case the appraiser is missing something in the value but in some cases appraisers usually don't miss much if they have a problem with the value it's usually the agent that got a little too happy and priced the property a little too high and then the other end of it potentially the buyer's agent didn't do their due diligence and maybe they just want a quick sale so they didn't run the recon all that aside, there are appraisers that are more conservative than other appraisers. That doesn't mean they're less able or less active or less trained. 
It's just they are different. But all intents and purposes, folks, most of those values are going to be pretty close. You take two appraisers from different necks of the woods, but understand the local market wherever they're appraising property within, usually they're pretty close. So I'm not really worried, and I've never seen that as really an issue since I've been doing this since 1998. Appraisers are pretty locked on, and they do a hell of a job. So saying that, that's a point of sale cost, and that's going to be five, six, seven hundred dollars depending on the loan amount, the type of loan, your lender. The same thing with the home inspector, probably four, five, six depending on size of property. Termites and termite inspections usually almost everything about a hundred bucks, eighty-five to a hundred dollars. It depends. The reason why these are important for you is because these are your inspections. This is a property you're going to enjoy. Now, to try to compare that with purchasing a vacation package in Mumbai, I don't get it. It's just not the same. It's definitely not apples to apples. Now, there's probably somebody out there, and they've tried different commission models with real estate. They've tried the help you sell type model where you pay a discount for a discount listing, discount brokerage, don't really do much. You're pretty much fronting most of the paperwork yourself. That's a model I've seen that I've seen some full service with discounts as well. But at the end of the day, all of those commissions are negotiable. So understand that if you're out there wanting to hire an agent to represent you in the purchase, find out how they get compensated and find out if in fact they'll budge on that amount. Same thing if you're selling residential real estate. Find out if that agent that you're interviewing is going to come down from that 3% or 2.5% or whatever it may be. And then you have to have that discussion with your agent and those around you. Are you going to traditionally, are you going to pay the agent representing the buyer? And then how much? You're going to give them 50 bucks, 100 bucks. You're going to give them part of the, the, the total commission. You're going to give them a percentage. What does that look like? And then wait and see how it works out. Is your agent savvy enough to be able to capture the buyer on the property? Then the other question, though, maybe they are, but do you want them to represent the other party on the transaction and the sale of your residence? A lot of the buyers that I talk to, a lot of the sellers that I talk to, they want a different agent. They don't want the same agent that's representing the seller because they don't believe that that agent can be impartial and fair. In addition to that, that agent has a job to do. That agent has to get that property sold for the seller and represent the buyer at the same time. If the seller doesn't want to budge and the buyer doesn't want to budge, the bad person in this middle that's unable to make either party budge is always viewed as the agent. That's a horrible spot to be in. Now, unless the, the agent is able to totally separate themselves out of each side, establishes everything up front and explains to both parties, this is how this is going to work. At the end of the day, it's still very difficult. In fact, almost impossible and probably the reason why several states, and I believe a province in Canada also outlaw, outlaws the process of dual agency or the same agent representing the buyer that represents the seller. Not a big fan of it. I've done it several times, but there's a lot of disclosure, even more so than the regular disclosures. In fact, we have to really be super present with everything so both sides are getting the full information. But walking away from those transactions, especially if you have a difficult seller and a difficult buyer, it's really difficult for that agent to make that work out in a very wonderful way for all parties. So just watch out for that. You know, you have human beings involved. Breaking away from that model though and having it so you don't have that coverage, you don't have people with you, you don't have other experts that have sold thousands of properties, knowing what to look for, that's incredibly valuable. I understand a travel agent that sold thousands of packages to Greece, that's great. But usually that package is a few thousand dollars at the most not hundreds of thousands of dollars taking at least 30 years to pay off, which is a great wealth building mechanism over time. Everybody sees that and you can do the studies on that. Travel, not so much. I haven't seen anybody cash in on a travel package unless they bought some ticket early, were able to resell it near the end. But with all those fees, folks, trying to change the name on a ticket or trying to get it reassigned to somebody else, 
You know what I'm talking about. That's not easy. I hope everybody enjoyed today's show. As far as inventory goes, real quick, let me wrap up with this. I'll get off the commission bandwagon. So as far as today, we only have two extra listings that have hit the market for sale. And in all of Santa Clarita Valley, not very many listings online. Still a very tight seller's market. We're seeing that. I ran the numbers earlier, just don't recall. 331 total active listings on the Santa Clarita real estate market for sale. That's going to be all of the cities out here. That's all active inventory in Santa Clarita. And that's going to include single family residences, condominiums, townhomes. When you're ready, all you have to do is go to connorwithhonor.com forward slash utilities. Connorwithhonor.com forward slash utilities. That's C O N N O R, right, right here. Uh, forward slash utilities there when you go there you'll see that i put together a utility page for people moving to santa clarita valley you know who do you need to call who's the electric buy who's the gas buy if you want to get some kind of internet what's that look like you want cable you one of those old people <laughs> i'm an old people but one of those people that just need to have cable i get that you know but if you're gonna jump into the world of streaming that might be something to consider too. So more important in that realm might be a faster internet connection versus just your super 50 megabytes per second download speed cable. Maybe a gig is what you've been th you should be thinking about. I'm Connor with Honor. We'll talk to you tomorrow, Tuesday show. It'll be exciting, and we'll have more real estate information and news to offer. Thanks for watching. Be well, and I'm Connor with Honor. Over and out.